Welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church of Bentonville. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. I hope everyone will take a moment and send a greeting, a blessing to one another through the comments as we continue to strengthen our community in Christ. As we begin a new year, there are new opportunities for all ages to grow in faith and opportunities to serve others. Our January newsletter was sent out by eBlast on Friday. It is also available on our church website, so I hope you will read it and consider the opportunities, including a new adult study on Wednesday nights that starts this week called Reflections on the Lord's Prayer. Pastor George and I are happy to talk with you and help you find a place to connect and engage. I also want to give a word of welcome to Jeannie Lee, who is serving as our substitute organist while our own Christy Olesky is home on parental leave with her baby son, Thatcher. Jeannie is an accomplished organist and pianist. She's well known in the Northwest Arkansas community in performance, education, and in the church. Jeannie recently retired from serving at First United Presbyterian Church in Fayetteville after almost 14 years, and we are delighted, Jeannie, that you are here with us in worship in the coming weeks. Well, today we celebrate the baptism of the Lord Sunday. We remember Jesus' baptism as well as our own. We remember the identity and calling that we share together as Christians to live out the love, the peace, and the justice of Jesus Christ to whom we are joined in and through our baptism. To remind us of our identity and calling in Christ and of Christ's presence here with us in his love and in his light, we are excited to have a new Christ candle and a new Christ candle holder. The Christ candle holder was made by Potter David Berg, who also made our communion wear, so we look forward to lighting it for the very first time today. As we look ahead to the steadfast love and light of Christ sustaining us in these national days of these days of national turbulence, when we have experienced a, attacks on our democracy in the form of violence, we are experiencing shock and dismay as we witnessed the breach of our nation's capital, though not for long, putting people and democratic processes at risk. In the aftermath of all of this, as people of faith, we come together in worship to seek to be faithful to Jesus Christ, to hear what is true in the will and word of God. So we come today to be strengthened, to be comforted, to be guided by our faith as we renew our resolve to live in the way of Jesus Christ. So friends, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Would you pray with me? Eternal God, in these days of national struggle and darkness, we pray that you would shine your light We ask for your truth and wisdom to prevail among our leaders. And we pray that what is just and right will be upheld and that what is unjust and broken will be mended. As we worship you this morning, may we hear your voice and find courage and hope as we seek to follow you in faith. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. In the beginning, darkness covered the deep, and God said, Let there be light. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The Lord says, Do not fear, I am with you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. 
The voice of the Lord is over the waters. As Jesus was coming out of the water, the Spirit of God rested on him like a dove. A voice sounded from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. As God's beloved children, let us worship the one who is still speaking. Let us worship God. Now let us join together in singing our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Our praise is lifted to our eternal and holy God. And that praise is made more complete as we receive again the assurance that we are held secure in God's grace. Within that assurance, let us be honest before God, knowing that the Lord God Almighty is holy and we are not. Let us repent of all that is unholy as we confess our sin, release our burdens, ready to be washed once again in holy grace. Let us pray together. Merciful God, in baptism you promise forgiveness and new life, making us part of the body of Christ. We confess that we allow the past to hold us captive. We cling to destructive habits, hold grudges, and are reluctant to extend your grace to others as well as ourselves. In your loving kindness, have mercy on us 
and free us from sin. Fulfill the promises of our baptism so that we may rise to new life and live together in peace. Amen. As a voice from heaven said to Jesus, so in Christ God speaks to us. You are my child, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. Let us live in the assurance of this good news and share it with others. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us be kind to one another and tender-hearted, forgiving one another just as God in Christ has forgiven us. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Let us share signs of Christ's peace with one another, with those who are with you or with our online community through the comments. Let us share Christ's peace. This is Edward Edwards coming to you live from the baptismal font inside First Presbyterian Church of Bentonville. I'm investigating a report that water, yes, simple, ordinary water, it can not only wash away your skin, but also invite you into this magical family we call the church. I'm speaking with Miss Melissa Monroe here, a member of this church, trying to get to the bottom of this. So, Miss Monroe, is there any evidence to support this claim that water is magical? <laughs> well, no. The water isn't magic at all. In fact, we just actually use plain, simple tap water. When an adult decides to affirm their faith in Jesus Christ and wants to be baptized, the water is an outward sign of what God is actively doing through baptism, washing us, caring for us, and making us a part of the church and the body of Christ. When babies are baptized, the parents or guardians affirm their faith in Jesus Christ, and then the parents or guardians and the whole church promise to love and guide the child in their faith in Jesus. We recognize that God reaches out to us in love and grace even before we can answer for ourselves. Wow, that's amazing. All right, another question. So if this water isn't magic, it's just tap water, when did the church start doing this? Ah, good question. Well, in today's scripture passage, Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, was going around the countryside baptizing people after they confessed their sins. He was getting everyone ready for Jesus' upcoming ministry. Well, one day, Jesus went down to where John was baptizing people in the Jordan River, and he was also baptized. The Bible says... And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from the heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Now that 
was a special day, and it was clear that Jesus is God's beloved son. Jesus' baptism confirmed who he was and prepared him to begin his ministry. Okay, so let me get this straight. You don't have any magic water. No, no magic water whatsoever, just ordinary tap water? <laughs> That's right. Huh. No, there is nothing magic about it at all. The sacrament of baptism is an outward sign and symbol of what God is actively doing through baptism, washing, nurturing, and making a, and, and marking us as belonging to God and to one another, no matter how old we are. Well, thank you for speaking with me today, Ms. Monroe. I'm guessing you want me to pray with you to this group of friends you have before I sign off? Oh, yes, please. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Would you guys pray with me? You can repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for the waters of baptism. Thank you for the waters of baptism. And help me remember. And help me remember. That we are always. That we are always. Your children. Your children. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, you heard it here first, folks. There is no magical water here that can wash away your skin. It is just ordinary tap water. Thank you for joining me once again, Ms. Monroe. This has been Edward Edwards, signing off. Bye, friends. Let us pray for the illumination of God's word. Eternal God, as your word is read and proclaimed today, may your spirit help us to hear your voice and to take heart knowing that you are ever with us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from Psalm 29. Let us listen to the word of God. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes both flames forth of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, David, for that reading from Psalm. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. We continue hearing from the word of God, our Lectionary reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, starting at verse 4. Let us listen. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, 
he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What happened in our nation's capital on Wednesday was shocking and alarming. A mob of insurrectionists incited by the president's false words, twisted rhetoric, many carrying in their hands and on their bodies signs and symbols of white supremacy, Christian nationalism, who attempted to stop the certification of the presidential and vice presidential election with chaos and violence. Using guns and clubs, other weapons, they overran the police, shattered windows, breached secure spaces, ransacked and spray painted chambers and offices. They left threatening notes. Members and staff of both houses were ushered to safe locations because their lives were at risk. Rioters took selfies as they gleefully sat in seats of power that belonged to others. And yet, as the building was cleared and secured, members of Congress were resolved, and they resumed their duty to country and to us all, and they completed their work. For those who stayed up until almost four in the morning to watch to the end, it was a moment of deep relief, a somber thanksgiving. It was a domestic attack on American democracy, and we, I know I am, still shaken. We grieve the loss of five lives and pray for the families who are in mourning. Events continue to play out in calls for accountability, for resignations, for repentance, and for repair of breaches of personal and national trust. We will be grappling with the ramifications of this for a very long time. As I was watching the events unfold, among the many shocking and disturbing sights, what struck me in my gut with the horror of it all, were the signs that people were carrying. Did you notice them? Signs that declared their identity and purpose. The Confederate flag was carried into the Capitol and held high, along with KKK insignia, white supremacist symbols that declare the strength of the grip of racial hatred and injustice in our country still white supremacist symbols flying high over a rioting scene where, as historian Heather Cox Richardson put it, no one could miss that black protesters could never in a million years have broken in the windows of the Capitol, invade, wander around taking selfies before leaving without arrest. And in what is too often conflated with these signs of racial hatred, discrimination, and white supremacy were signs being carried by insurrectionists up to the Capitol steps, across the threshold, and into its chambers with the words, Jesus saves. Did you see those signs? On banners, on t-shirts, even on a tall wooden cross, Jesus saves. While I believe that Jesus does in fact save, what could be more twisted than to claim that all of this is what Jesus Christ is truly about? That this is what the Christian faith is truly about? Friends, there is nothing Christian about what happened. Imagining that these kinds of events are to be blessed in the name of Jesus is a dangerous and unfortunately decades-old conflation of a twisted Christianity with a toxic nationalism 
immersed in white supremacy that exalts violence, power, bullying, and privilege. As Presbyterian pastor and professor at Louisville Seminary, Amy Plantinga Paw put it, she wrote, folks, this is not the way of Jesus. This is not the way of the one who speaks, lives, and walks the way of self-giving love for those who have been left behind, marginalized, thrown out, shunted aside, bullied, laughed at, impoverished, enslaved, pushed away, oppressed, left out, humiliated. This is not the way of the one whose strength lies in his seeming weakness, the weakness of the way of love, the one whose acts of giving up his power so that others may be empowered actually got him killed by those who felt threatened by the magnetism of his radically different kind of leadership. Friends, today in the church, we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. What words and signs do we lift up today? The words in our scripture from the Gospel of Mark today are not words to stir violence, but they are words like repentance and confession of sin. Words that compel the crowds not to riot, but to humble themselves and to be part of something that will bring love and peace and justice to everyone. The signs in our scripture today are not flags or banners, but it is the water of baptism, the voice of God, the Holy Spirit descending like a dove, the words and signs that we hold up, the words and signs that mark our, our identity and purpose as Christians are bound to Jesus Christ himself, bound to his identity and purpose, declared through the loving voice of our triune God, whose voice breaks through the heavens to declare over the waters and over Jesus, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. See, Jesus' baptism was a declaration of who he is, the son of God, the beloved, the one who came to save, to redeem, to inaugurate the reign of God. And so our baptism is a sign of God's covenant that we too are God's children, that we are joined with God's Son, and we are joined with one another as a family in Christ, and that our lives are to be about the things that Jesus is about, to be his very hands and feet, to embody the reign of God and right into a world that brings temptation and toxicity and turmoil. Right after his baptism in the Gospel of Mark in verses 12 and 13, it says, The Spirit drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. So with the water and the Spirit still resting on Jesus, what does, this, what does the newly baptized Jesus face? He faces challenge, hardship, and temptation in ways that may just cause him to deny or forget who he is. Or at the very least, it could get him off track and so open up opportunities for evil to gain a foothold. And so it is for us. And that is why the words and signs of our baptismal liturgy in our Book of Common Worship are so powerful. They're powerful for me. They're words and signs that make no bones about the fact that there are forces that would seek to undo us, that would try to disenfranchise us as we work for the love and peace and justice that God envisions for all of us words and signs of our baptism that remind us that there are times, like now, when both sides are not all fine and good, that there are things that must be renounced and overcome. 
And above it all, the words and signs of our baptism assure us that the God who is our creator, redeemer, and sustainer is with us through it all. Now, in the sacrament of baptism, we draw near to the baptismal font. Perhaps we are held as infants in the arms of our parents or guardians, or perhaps we're standing here for ourselves, all in response to God's grace that brought us there in the first place, no matter how old we are. In our liturgy, the pastor says to all who are gathered. Through the sacrament of baptism, we enter the covenant God established in Jesus Christ. And within this covenant, God gives us new life, strengthens us to resist evil, and nurtures us in love. Through this covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. And then we, or the adults on our behalf, answer the following questions. And as now we hear today these baptismal questions, I invite all of us to answer them anew for ourselves and for the church, for these days and for this moment in history. Are we ready? Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? The response, I do. The next question, who is your Lord and Savior? The response, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And finally, will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? The response, I will, with God's help. In the sacrament of baptism, after affirming our faith together, usually with the words of the Apostles' Creed, and pouring the water, and praying a prayer of blessing over it, we receive the sacrament with simple words and signs. First, the saying of our name, Elizabeth. David, Nathan, then we say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And whether the water is a sprinkle from a font or an immersion in a river or anything in between, the sign of water signifies that we belong to God that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked as Christ's own forever. And so in these days, in these days when words and signs of violence and lies are sown in order to hold power for power's sake, in order to deceive and to tear down and oppress others, we must, as Christians, be rooted in the words and signs of our baptism, words and signs that remind us that our life is joined with the life of Jesus, his life of self-giving love, his life of speaking truth to power, his life of providing help to the suffering and lifting up the lowly, words and signs of God's grace that name our sin and that call for repentance Words and signs that not only remind us of who we are, but also compel us to act in the face of toxic and tumultuous times that compel us to remember that if we need the courage or the clarity, if we need the hope to be able to speak out and to live out our calling toward peace and justice and love, then we know that Jesus, the baptized one, the one who's in whom we are baptized, he does indeed save us. And he goes with us to uphold us in all things. 
Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, let us share what we believe by affirming our faith using the words from a brief statement of faith. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls men and women to all ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Will you join your hearts with me in prayer, please? Holy Lord, as we ascribe glory and strength to you, we come to you on the bended knees of human weakness. In this broken and fearful world, give us courage. As you are everywhere the giver and renewer of life, renew our lives this day. Renew our hope. Renew our country. We lift to you the families of those who perished in the turmoil at our nation's capital this week. We lift to you all who were seized by fear and shock in the Capitol building. May your hand of healing be upon those who were bodily injured. May your hand of protection be on all law enforcement in the days to come. May your spirit of wisdom and humility be upon all who lead in this moment. Thank you for those who have stood up, spoken the truth, and are searching for a better future. Thank you that at this time of sadness, shame, and horror, that idolatries have been unmasked. Bring the powerful from their thrones, expose deceit and selfishness, that truth and peace would flourish. May your strength be upon our resolve, each one of us and as a nation, our resolve to recognize and address the evil of racism that was on full display this past Wednesday. May your justice prevail in all things going forward. Our hearts are also heavy, O oh God, with the weight of the pandemic. We pray for speedier and more efficient vaccine distribution, for strength for health care workers, for healing of the sick, and comfort for the bereaved. May we not grow numb to this tragedy, even as we are so weary with it, but may we grieve its full weight and face the months ahead with vigor and prudence. Bring calm to our souls, O oh God, with comfort that only can come from you. Your voice, O oh Lord, your voice is what we need to hear and follow this day and always. Give strength to your people. 
bless your people with peace. In the name of your Son, the Beloved, we pray his prayer now together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, with our baptized Lord alive in our hearts, we are called to be different. We are called to be agents of change and reconciliation. Such a task requires our best. As we are set free by grace, let us continue to grow in faith, committed to love, committed to truth, committed to peace, and to hope. Our sharing of time and treasure is symbolic of the commitment of our whole lives. May the Spirit guide our giving. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, the beloved, to you we offer our praise. For your sake and by your calling, we offer gifts from our lives. Teach us to proclaim your love in a hurting world, not only in word, but in action, service, and attitude, that all we say and do and give would be an offering to you. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is Go to the World. Let us sing of our intention to follow the calling of God upon our lives.
remember and live out our baptisms, embodying the very life of Jesus Christ. And as we go out into the world from this time of worship, be of good courage. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.